Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God. We light this first candle of Advent, a sign of hope that God's light and love are breaking into the world again. And as we do, we ask God to make us ready to cleanse us of our sin, to give us new eyes, new ears, new hearts of welcome so that as we receive the light of God, the one coming into the world, we will also carry God's light and love into the world. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship. As we prepare to receive God's word, let us join our hearts in prayer. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning 
the first day. And also from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't usually kick off Advent worship with a scripture reading that's typically reserved for Christmas Eve. If you've been part of this church even for a little while, you probably know that we try to take Advent, this season of preparing our hearts and homes to welcome Christ, pretty seriously. We try not to rush ahead. As hard as it is sometimes, we don't fill up December 1st through 24th with Hark the herald angels sing, and oh, come all ye faithful. We wait patiently, longingly. We try to cultivate a sense of wonder and expectation so that by the time Christmas Eve comes, we are sincerely ready to fill the house with joy and gratitude, with loved ones old and new, near and far. We're ready to pass around fresh communion bread, fill the room with candlelight as the sanctuary and the night sky darkens and proclaim together, Christ the Savior is born. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. I usually try to practice that holy expectation that I preach, and yet here I am proclaiming the end of the story for us, the very verse we speak as we light those little candles on Christmas Eve. Or maybe... Proclaiming the beginning. These opening sentences of John's gospel purposefully echo the creation story in Genesis when God speaks and calls creation into being, when a single word from the Lord creates light out of darkness, the whole heavens and earth out of a formless void. So the author of John is making the connection that the coming of Christ is a new creation for all creation and at the same time an old creation there from the very beginning. The Gospel of John was probably written a little bit later than the other three Gospels, and it seems to come out of a Christian community that is going through a painful time. There's growing division among them about how to understand who Jesus really is, and it is ripping apart the synagogue and even families. Not to mention, it's the end of the first century, and Christianity is an illegal fringe movement. So the author of this gospel wants to tell the story of Jesus in a way that will inspire Christians to keep the faith, to keep their hope, even during some dark days when they might start to wonder 
if the story is still true. This image of light and dark that starts in chapter one weaves through the entire book with the author of this gospel ultimately insisting that in Jesus Christ, light has already conquered darkness because Christ has already conquered death. Christ is the beginning and the end all at once. And likewise, we are wrapped up in God's love from beginning to end, no matter what. Some of you might be familiar with the old children's story, Where the Wild Things Are. Max is this rambunctious child who has put on a wolf costume and gotten into all sorts of mischief. His mother calls him Wild Thing and sends him to bed without his supper. When Max gets in bed, he goes on a grand imaginary adventure. A thick forest grows in his bedroom. His walls turn into the great wide world. Even an ocean tumbles by. Max sails off and finds the place where the wild things are. Max winds up becoming king of the wild things. But eventually, he gets lonely. He wants to be somewhere where he is truly loved. He starts to smell something good to eat. So he decides to abandon his throne over the wild things. Max sails on back to his bedroom where he finds his supper right there waiting for him. And it was still hot. Unconditional love and a hot supper were right there where he had left it. No matter our own trouble or mischief, no matter how thick our forest, no matter how real our demons or how dark these days might grow, we still wake up each morning to unconditional love. We come home to a God who will always welcome us to the table, pull up a chair, and feed our souls. The holiday season, this whole stretch from Thanksgiving to New Year's, can be challenging even in the best of years. Some of us run frantic trying to create the magic. Some of us grieve that empty chair at the table. Doesn't matter how many years it's been. Some of us struggle with broken relationships or hopes undone. There's nostalgia for those simpler days the longing for true peace in our broken world. Holidays are joyful, but they are not stress-free or grief-proof. And it can feel like a thick, wild forest. This year, we get the extra gut punch of isolation when we should be together. This year, we get the extra anxiety over growing COVID cases and loved ones who are at risk. All of it without the comforts that we would ordinarily cling to 
shared meals, this sanctuary, that room full of candles waiting for us on Christmas Eve. So during this Advent season, as the nights grow longer and the days potentially harsher, hold on to God's light. You already know the end of the story. Remember where we are headed. From the same place we have come. From light and life. For unending love. For true goodness. For holy peace. And trust that there is no darkness that could ever extinguish it. So light an extra candle in your home. Find an extra way to share love safely with your neighbors. Know it in your bones that nothing will overcome God's light. Not darkness, not a formless void, not a pandemic, not loneliness or despair, not even death. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was a wind from God, a voice saying, let there be. In the beginning, it was good. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Thanks be to God. Amen. Come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night. And as dark shadows put to flight, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, by. All peoples in one heart and mind Bid envy, strife, and discord cease Fill the whole world with heaven's peace Oh, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel Shall come to thee O Israel. Friends, as we ready ourselves to welcome the Lord, may the light of Christ surround you. The peace of God sustain you. 
the stirring of the Spirit fill you, now and always. Amen.